Praise the Lord. Man, what a service last night. I'm telling you, I really believe that the Lord dealt with a lot of hearts. Amen. Brought a lot of folks to Everest. It was Abraham Lincoln, they see, said that if he had six hours to cut down a tree, he said he'd spend the first four hours sharpening his axe. Amen. And I, I'd like to do that kind of, uh, amen, apply that spiritually. Anytime I feel my, my weapons getting dull, amen, begin to feel my sermons becoming a little dusty and dry, amen, I like to whip out that weapon that we know works, works the best, amen, but it's, it's the thing that people like want to do the least, hallelujah. Amen, because we, we, are, we are Americans. We got a lot at our fingertips. But I think if you'll take what the Holy Ghost said, and I, I'm not even talking about the, the preaching. Just, just forget anything. I, well, don't forget it. But let's say nothing I said, what the Holy Ghost said at the very last. Amen, ought to challenge us Amen. and spur us onward. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. We appreciate everything that has been done. Amen, good to see Brother Allen. Amen, a friend of ours preached for him several times and we appreciate his friendship and his prayers and what a, what a wonderful testimony. Amen, that, that uh, hallelujah. God can touch and heal whenever and whoever and whatsoever he willeth to do. Yeah. I can't answer for God why he doesn't do it for everybody. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, God's still got power to do it. And as long as he's got the power, we ought to have hope and faith to believe it. Amen. Amen. So whatever you're facing, believe God. Say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Hallelujah. We appreciate Brother brother Eddie and his family. And uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, man, we'd like to have church tonight. I don't know about you. I'd like just like to step on the devil's head. I think it's about time the church puts the devil back in his place. Huh? We've got authority in Christ's name. Yes. Amen. And I think it's about time. Amen. We don't have a lot of time. We might as well do it now. Praise God. Amen. Sister Boyd's going to sing. Let's get in here tonight. And there may be some missing because of graduation, but we're two or three are gathered together. He's here. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sis. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Glad to be saved tonight and I'm so thankful that I know Jesus as the lamb. Uh, we know that he's coming back as the lion out of the tribe of Judah to rule and to reign. We know he's coming for the church first but then we're coming back with him and uh, he's going to come back as a lion and the yes, song that I'm about to sing says uh, like a lamb led to the slaughter. You know he gave his life willingly. He had no fight in him. He gave it all. But it's going to be different that next time. But I'm glad I met him as the lamb. Like the lamb led to the slaughter. Jesus never opened his mouth. From the trial to the crucifixion to the grave he was laid out. After three days in the garden too. Prove a thing. I'm afraid of all the 
Hallelujah. Amen. Well, how many know tonight the devil didn't get frightened last night? Amen. Enough to just stay away from this service. Huh? He would like to hinder if he could. But we're going to believe God, amen, to give us a Holy Ghost meeting here at Bible Way tonight, aren't we? Amen. The book of First, First John tonight. First John, appreciate each and every one that's here. Amen. The offering. Lambert's today preached on fasting last night and went to Lambert's today. Oh, Jesus. But really, church, I wasn't calling you to an instant fast. That's something you pray over. Amen. It really is. I mean, I don't think you have to pray over fasting a day. Surely, I mean, maybe, I guess, careful not to pray over all things, I guess, you know, but really, I mean, a day ain't going to kill nobody. You may think it. I mean, you get to fast, and when you wake up, first thing, I mean, that's how it is with me. I'll be fine, but the day I decide I'm going to fast, amen, I, I, when I wake up, amen, my pinky toe will be saying, give me a Twinkie, Twinkie, Twinkie. <laughs> I mean, from the very front, just wanted to eat all day. Amen, that's part of it, crucifying the flesh. Hallelujah. Well, we uh, definitely want to, uh, amen, help you tonight. One verse we're going to read, and then we're going to preach from it. And uh, I pray that the Lord will be exalted, and the devil will be demoted in this service tonight. Hallelujah. He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's habitual sin. That E-T-H is a continuing. He that habitually sinneth is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For, the, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Father, we come to you in your Son's name. I pray that you would anoint us with the Comforter that was sent down to us here below. The Comforter, Lord, that is here Lord, not to speak of himself, but to glorify Christ. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost would anoint me tonight. That I could glorify your Son. That I could lift him up, Lord. That the church would help me lift him up. I pray that we would put the enemy under our feet. For his defeat is under our feet. I pray tonight, Lord, let us, let us find victory in Jesus. Let us find joy in the Holy Ghost. Let us find peace that passeth all understanding. Touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Open every heart. Anoint me. Let my words be liquid fire. And we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. I'd like to preach a few moments tonight if the Lord would help me. I'd like to preach on the manifesto. Hallelujah. The manifesto. Praise God. Amen. Or maybe you could title it the day, amen, two manifestos collided. Hallelujah. But we'll just stick with the manifesto. And uh, I, 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 uh, the, uh, a manifesto is an official public authoritative declaration or proclamation stating a person or a group's mission and their purpose. This verse was Jesus' manifesto. He said he came to destroy the works of the devil. He didn't come to play footsies with the enemy. He didn't come to let the devil take advantage of him. He came with a manifesto and it was to destroy the works of the devil. Every work of 
of the devil. Jesus came and took flesh upon himself. He then walked among us for 33 and a half years that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we know that he did. Now I know today it is common for certain groups, uh, amen, uh, that whether it, it, you know, it's, it, it's common for certain groups to post online their statements of belief and their missions to carry them out. Amen. After there's been a terror attack, or a mass shooting often the investigators that investigate those tragic events they will search online the social media they'll scour their emails and their text messages and many times they will find that the per perpetrators had stated for all the world to see exactly their evil intent they publicly posted online their manifesto and it revealed the nature behind their deeds. Are you hearing me tonight? The PLO, the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas and ISIS, they all have their manifestos and they have stated clearly, amen, and definitively what their, their intent is. And it is to wipe Israel off the map. There's no hidden agenda. That is what they are wanting to do. Now, I want to tell you tonight, I'd like to tell ISIS and the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas and all those that set their face against the apple of God's eye. Every man that ever done it before, Israel came away with a holiday. Pharaoh did it. They came away with Passover. Haman tried it. They came away with Purim. Antiochus Epiphanes, he tried it. They came away with Hannah. They meant Hanukkah. And Hitler tried it. And they came away with a new nation. Are you hearing me? They are not going to wipe out, amen, God's people. God has put his name in Jerusalem. It's the center of the earth. Are you hearing me? And one day, Jesus, like Shage's son, he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's going to set the Amen. Upon that, that throne. Are you hearing me today? Now, I'd like to tell you, Planned Parenthood has a manifesto. The, the abortion, they, they say, their manifesto says that an abortion ought to be legal. Amen. For everybody, for any reason, at any time. Amen. Even up to nine months, we know the wickedness of the abortion industry and Planned Parenthood. But I want to tell you, this is a manifesto of murder but this manifesto is just a subdivision of another universal amen manifesto Jesus is manifesto amen is that he come to destroy the works of the devil amen but Satan's manifesto is this the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Don't overlook that little word not in John 10.10. 10. It conveys that Satan, his one and his only agenda, he comes for no other purpose. He meant but to kill and to steal and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that I might destroy the works of the devil. I'm telling you, you can shake it out any way you want to in these last days in which we're living. But the fact of the matter is, it's a spiritual battle. Amen. It's God against Satan. It's light 
against darkness. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Jesus' manifesto is he's come to destroy. Brother Eddie, the works of the devil. Satan come to steal. Jesus come to destroy the works of the devil. Satan came to kill. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Satan came to destroy. Jesus came to destroy the destroyer. Hebrews 2.14 that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death that is the devil he then that word destroy in that verse means to bring to naught it means to become of none effect it is mean it means to deliver it means to put down and to abolish I want to tell you tonight Jesus come to put the devil down amen brother we're not a part of a church that's barely hanging on an emaciated church a weak church a church that's about to go under we're a part of a church amen Christ is the head of the church I wish somebody in this house would shout amen at me tonight All right. The manifesto. He come to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Satan's manifesto is to kill, to steal, and destroy. But not only did Christ have a manifesto, Christ had a mandate. A mandate is when a person in authority gives an order to another to carry out. That mandate becomes their mission. Amen. The reason why the Navy SEALs are so successful is when they are given their mandate, they make it their mission, and they don't stop until their mission is completed. I want to tell you some 2,000 years ago, even the father said it's time son I want you to go I want you to deliver mankind I want you to bring redemption to them and he stepped down the pearly steps of glory left the sacred precincts of eternity he been Amen. Was born of a virgin. Amen. Walked 33 and a half years among men, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the leper. He been taken. Amen. Care. Come on here. He had a mandate, and it was his mission. He been. He said in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me. I want to tell you when Jesus said all power that word power there is not the same word power that we received in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 when we received power it was dunamis power it was dynamite power but this the power Jesus is speaking of here is not dunamis but it is excusia amen are you hearing me it means authority it means jurisdiction it means liberty it means power it means right it means strength amen I want to tell you Paul said it like this amen the exceeding now the under amen the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the mighty working of his power which he wrought in us when he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above principality and power and dominion and might amen that we are his body and he is the head I wish somebody would shout amen. I'm telling you, Jesus, amen, is the head of the church. He said upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against.
wasted. He gave us weapons. I preached about two of them last night. Prayer and fasting and faith believing. I want to tell you tonight, we have a mission. We have a mandate. He's the head of the church. He come to destroy the works of the devil, but he's at the right hand of the Father. But we're his body. We're his hands. Why ain't we working? We're his feet. Why ain't we walking? We're his mouth. Why ain't we talking? I'm telling you, we got authority. There's not a devil that can stand against God's holy Holy church. <laughs> Mr. Montgomery, the field marshal under Eisenhower. I heard uh, Clendenin say this. Brother Clendenin, a soldier asked him, said, how do you interpret the Great Commission? He said, you don't interpret it. Amen. You do it. Oh, Hallelujah. How do you interpret Christ's manifesto and his mandate? We don't interpret it. We got to do it. Are you all with me tonight? Hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you, amen, Satan, Jesus had a mandate from the Father. In Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Set the, set the prisoner free, break chains, open prison doors. He gave Christ that authority. And in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, he meant how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the enemy, those that were being harassed, those that were being tormented, those that were being pushed around, those that were being backed up in a corner. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And I want to tell you, Jesus tonight, he's walking these aisles. He doesn't want you to be depressed. He doesn't want you to be oppressed. He doesn't want you to be harassed. He is coming into this room tonight to destroy the works of the devil. Maybe you have chains that have shackled you down. Maybe you have habits you cannot break. Amen. Maybe you have depressions that you cannot shake. But I'm telling you the manifesto of heaven tonight. Amen. Is Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. He's come to deliver. He's come to liberate. He's come to free. He's come to lift up. Are you hearing me tonight church? Satan's name is transliterated into English from Hebrew. Amen. And there's a term in that, and I, can't, and I tried to think of that term today. Amen. When I read this down, I didn't write that term down, but there is a term I could figure it out. Somebody may know it. But Satan's name was transliterated into English from Hebrew. And I am told that the ancient Hebrew was written in word pictures. The ancient Hebrew alphabet was 22 pictures, even that stood for letters. And when we know the pictures for the letters, it gives greater meaning to the word. Hebrew words had a three-letter root. Amen. In old Hebrew, all consonants, amen, were, were, in, or, uh, uh, amen, were written. There were no vowels in the ancient Amen. Hebrew. And I'm not a Hebrew scholar. But the three letter word for Satan was S. T N. The A's are omitted. They said the S in that word picture was a picture of teeth and flames that was speaking of devour. The T was a picture of a serpent ready to strike. And the N was a picture of a fish swimming in water. Amen. And when you put those words together, he meant Satan means a serpent who is devouring life. Life. He meant, are you hearing me tonight? That's the Satan's job. That's his manifesto. That's his stratagem. His strategy. His wiles is to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus.
Jesus has come to kick back at him. Jesus has come to put him under his feet and put him under your feet. The Greek word for destroy is apolome, and it means utterly to ruin. It doesn't mean necessarily to kill. He comes to, amen, kill, steal, and destroy. And when we think of destroy, we think it means kill, but it doesn't necessarily because kill has already been mentioned. Amen. But it means to ruin something absolutely. Amen. That's what the devil would like to do tonight. He'd like to ruin your reputation. He'd like to ruin your character. He'd like to ruin your children. He'd like to ruin your testimony. Amen. If he can ruin your life with drugs and alcohol, he doesn't necessarily care whether you overdose or not. As long as he can ruin it, amen, beyond compare. If he can ruin it through addiction and sexual perversion, amen, gambling and pornography and drinking and drugging and cussing and lust, and amen, he would just assume ruin you that way. Amen, ruin you with divorce, ruin you with a broken family, ruin you with depression. But I want to tell you tonight, I don't know where you are tonight. You may have come into this building oppressed and depressed and suppressed by the enemy. But I'm here to tell somebody, amen, the manifesto that I'm bringing from heaven tonight is Jesus is here to destroy all the works of the devil that's in your life. He doesn't want you to come in the, and leave the same way you came. He wants to give you deliverance. He wants to break every chain. He wants to push back. That's his desire. That's his desire to ruin. And it's obvious tonight, Satan's on the loose. Read the news. Look on social media. He's on the loose. Come on now. 1 John 3, 5, he was manifested to take away our sins. 1 John 3, 8, he was just manifested to destroy the works of the devil. In Ephesians 2, he's the prince and the power of the air. 2 Corinthians 4, he's the God of this world. And let me tell you something right now. Amen, he, amen, amen, is in charge of a lot of things. Only because of God's permission. Heaven always overlooks hell. Are you hearing me? The devil. Amen. Come on. You ever heard of opposite equivalent? Amen. Listen to me. If I say in, you say out. I say up, you say I say cold, you say I say God, you say See, that's what we do. But really, that's not true. Huh? He's not even on the same plane as Jesus. Are you hearing me? Jesus wasn't a created being. The oneness folks may think that. He may come on now, but I don't think that. Are you hearing me? I believe God and the Father, God and the Son, God and the Holy Ghost. In persons, I believe three. In essence, I believe one. There's one God manifested in three persons. And I'm telling you, Jesus was not created before Abraham was he was when the morning stars danced together he was with the father and I'm telling you the devil is not on the same plane as the oh hallelujah somebody help me preach I want to tell you the devil is no match for the church amen the devil's no match for the Christ amen we just got to get the faith to believe again that God can do all things my God, somebody in this house needs to shout amen like you believe it tonight. That manifesto is oh, woo, to destroy the works of the devil. And Satan's on the loose. He's not going to stop smack talking, trash talking, until he's thrown 
into the pit. Brother, give, give, give me Revelation 21. Brother, if you will. Revelation 21. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. Has the devil ever talked any smack with you? You can't make it. You ain't good enough. You'll never overcome. You'll never get out of that problem. Amen. Amen. You're never going to, God's never going to work for you. Oh, come on now. You know how the devil does. He keeps working on us and working on us and working on us. Never shutting up. Never tiring. Always in our ear. Brother Lockley was 93 years old. He was an Assembly of God man from Crossland, Arkansas that I pastored right at the last of his life. Amen. Really, I didn't really even, he didn't even get to come to church. I just, he was staying home. Very godly man. I asked Brother Lockley at 93. I said, Brother, Brother Lockley, very sharp, very wise, even at 93. I said, tell me, Brother Lockley. I said, when was it the the hardest in your life up until now to fight the devil. I said, was it, was it when you were a young man, was it a teenager, because he saved all the teenager? Was it when you were in your 20s and early, your early marriage? Was he looked at me and he said, right now. Come on. Devil's still talking smack. He said, he makes me go back and relive every decision I ever made. Was it the right decision? You shouldn't have done that. He said, I made some bad decisions too. He said, but he's always in my ear. Amen. Trying to get me to live with regret. Trying to turn every bad thing that might have happened in my life on God. He said, preacher, it's harder to fight God right now than 93. That wasn't what I was wanting to hear. Are you hearing me? But I'm going to tell you, as long as you have breath, that smack talking devil, he man who wants to ruin, kill, steal, and destroy. Read, 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 read 21. Start with verse 1. Amen. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Don't that sound good? Right, yeah. All right, go ahead. Now John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Yes. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Yes. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. I think I got the wrong chapter. Huh? Hallelujah. 20. Chapter 20, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. That was good, Bob. That was encouraging. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's really good. Praise God. It wasn't going, going right, but it, it was feeling good. All right. <laughs> wasn't his fault, church. And I told him, I told him 20. Okay, let's get, let's go chapter 20. All right, let's start there. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. And I saw an angel. And I saw an angel. Come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. Wait, wait, wait. You saw, he saw an angel. He didn't see Jesus or the Father or the Holy Ghost, just an angel. <laughs> Go ahead, read some more. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And what a great chain in his hand. Woo! I'm getting, I'm getting excited. Go ahead. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. He, he laid hold of that old serpent, the dragon, the devil, an angel. <laughs> hey Amen. Come on here. Woo. Go ahead. Come on. And Satan had bound him a thousand years. And bound him a thousand years. Amen. Come on. Go ahead. Cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo. And shut him up. Right. Hallelujah. And shut him up. Now I know it's talking about putting him in a pit. Amen. Come on now. And, amen. And, 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 and putting him in prison. But I happen to like that part where he shut him up. That trash talking. Amen. Smack talking devil. That's always defying God's people. That's always oppressing God's people. He shut him up. I want to tell you I'm looking for the day Amen When he shuts him up But I want to tell you What he wants to do For someone here tonight He wants to shut the devil up He wants to put the devil Under 
your feet. He wants to give you the victory in Christ Jesus that will always cause you to triumph. Somebody say, shut up, devil. Amen. I'm tired of hearing you talk. My God's greater. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, Bible lady. Give the Lord a praise. Praise him, praise him, praise him. I'm about done. Hallelujah. Shut up the one who is always lying on God and Jesus. Always accusing you and me and the brethren. I'm not here, Brother Eddie Sullivan, to underestimate the fierceness of this, our struggle, nor the strength of our foe. Satan hates me. Satan accuses me. Satan tempts me. But God loves me. He pardons me. And he protects me. They tell me Satan, a man is a roaring lion, goeth about seeking whom he may devour. He is on the loose. But I have told been told there are animals in the jungle that are more fierce than that lion. They're stronger than that lion. Yet they tremble when he roars. How many needless hours tonight, by the way, have you trembled and shook? When you have the power of God in you, you have the dunamis dynamite power of God. And the devil roars and we tremble. I want to tell you, he may be on the loose, but God's got a noose. Are you hearing me? He can only go so far and that's it. I'm come to tell you, by the way, that devil may have tell you, you'll never have revival. You'll never see God fulfill the promise that he's promised uh, through the spirit uh, through tongues and interpretation but I'm telling you God has sent me with a manifesto to tell the devil shut up devil amen back up your time is up God's getting ready to pour out his spirit he's getting ready to save the lost he's getting ready to sanctify the believer somebody shout amen tonight Oh. I gotta quit. All power is of God. Get your faith. When was the last time you prayed in the Holy Ghost? Prayed in the Holy Ghost. Woo! My Lord, my Lord, we got to get back to that. The old timers used to say it was praying through. Huh? Praying through. I preached on that last night and preached on fasting last night. But I'm here to tell you tonight. Amen. God said, you tell them I have a manifesto. I've come to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. But sometimes all we can hear is his loud roar. His voice in our head. I know he's the prince and the power of the air. Amen. In time, he rules in this world. He's not going to rule hereafter. I know the place he rules is in this world, but he doesn't rule in heaven. I know that his subjects in this world are the children of darkness, but they are not the children of light, and we are the children of light. In John 10, the word destroy means to utterly ruin. That's what he would like to do. He'd like to ruin this church. He would like to ruin your family. He would like to ruin your children. He'd like to ruin Brother Eddie's ministry. He'd like to ruin Brother Allen's ministry. He'd like to ruin my ministry. Are you hearing me? But the word that is demon used destroy, that Jesus is going to destroy the works of the devil. It's another word. It's luo. It means to loose. It means to unbind. It means to break. Amen. Or to sever. Amen. What does, what's that telling me? Amen. The devil's come to ruin and mess up and tear up and break up. Amen. But Jesus came to undo what the devil has done. Are you hearing me? He can fix it. There's not a knotted mess that he can't untangle. There's not a black 
darkened heart that he cannot say or you ought to be shouting about right now I'm talking about God Almighty amen he's able to do it seed and abundantly above all that we ask or even think I got the manifesto I got the mandate I got the message Lord don't let me preach with the enticing words of man's wisdom but give us a demonstration of the power hallelujah He came to preach deliverance to the captive. Oh, yes. Thank you, the open of the prison to those that are bound. Break chains of bondage. Cleanse from sin. Heal from sickness. Chase sorrow away. But I know <coughs> he's got a loud mouth. And we've let him sit on our shoulder for so long. That we believe his lies. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, Ye are of your father the devil. Yeah. <coughs> and the lust of your father ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning. And the truth abode not in him. Are you hearing me? He is a liar and the father of it. Why are we so quick to listen to him and not answer the voice of heaven? You know what I'm talking about. God says, take a lap, run, leap for joy, roll down the middle of the aisle. Crawl to the altar. Lord, Lord, Lord. Now if that's you, Lord, Lord. Then he goes through it and he tells you what to do. But Lord, if that's you, if that's really you, have Brother Eddie walk to the back doors, turn around, do three cartwheels, 50 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, and I'll obey you. So that's how we are. Brother Eddie might even try it if he could get some of you to move. <laughs> I'm trying to... But you know how it is. Amen. But Sister Darlene, Sister Kirsten, get to singing. You feel God. You go to lift your hands and worship God. And the devil says, you ain't worthy. You're right. <laughs> Put your hands down. Let go down. <laughs> You're right, I ain't worthy. I ain't worthy. We immediately listened to him. Sat down in our pew, put our thumb in our mouth. <laughs> Come on now. You know what I'm saying. Hey Amen. You know where I'm at tonight. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. But I want to tell you something. There ain't none of us worthy. None of us are worthy. We're only made worthy through the blood. Amen. We're only made worthy through the one who had a mandate. And he had a mission. And he followed that mission through. And he died on an old rugged cross. Amen. Come on. They put him in a grave. But the grave couldn't hold him. And those three days that he was in the tomb, he went down into the caverns of darkness. Amen. There was trembling going on. Hell wasn't partying. Amen. They were frightened. Amen. He walked up to the devil. Amen. He didn't have to say one word to him. He just put out his hand and the devil put the keys in his hand. If the devil would have back talked him, he would have slapped him with the speed of light, backhanded him with the speed of sound, and took him from him. But I'm telling you, amen, our God is great. Amen. Our Lord is higher. Amen. Somebody in this place needs to realize you don't have to leave here tonight defeated. You can leave baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. You can leave here feeling clean and not dirty, happy and not miserable. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Come on, preach. Hallelujah. Come on, preach. You let the devil shave you thinking about a song. You've been letting the devil sit on your shoulder and like Goliath, 
40 days and 40 nights. Amen. Every day and every night he threatened the people of Israel. David showed up. Are you hearing me? Oh man, I wish I could get this. Are you hearing me? The devil was just a back talking and smack talking. And amen. All of a sudden Israel's hiding 40 days, two times a day. His mouth is thunder boomed across the valley, intimidating them, defying them, defying their future. Amen. I want to tell you that's what the devil's doing to some of you tonight. He's trying to defy your future. He's wanting to defy you. He's thinking he can defy your God. Amen. He's trying to tell you, you're going to serve me. Amen. You'll never break free from this habit. You'll never break Break free from my clutches. Listen to me. Israel's paralyzed. Saul won't fight him. Amen. I believe Jonathan either was being restrained or Jonathan was not there. Amen. David's best friend or he would have said, Daddy, amen, I'll go take out that uncircumcised Philistine. But the fact of the matter, nobody, amen, is fighting him. All he's doing is talking. Amen. He's not body slammed nobody. He's not punched nobody. He's just talking. And I want to tell you that's what the devil's doing to you. He's just talking. He's been talking, 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 talking. And you're afraid of him. He's a boaster. He's a braggart. But I want to tell you, amen, brother, nobody's moving. But David shows up, amen, from his keeping his father's sheep. And he shows up with a mandate. And he has a mission. Hallelujah. And he hears him one time to fly the God of heaven and David said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's defying the God of heaven oh I wish you amen get with me for just about five more minutes I'd like to tell you something David said who is that uncircumcised Philistine you know how it is they all started his brothers tried to hold him back but you got to notice he called him an uncircumcised Philistine. Why did he call him an uncircumcised Philistine? It was because Israel was circumcised. That was the sign of their covenant. And David shows up, and you got this uncircumcised Philistine. Got them backed into the corner, hiding in the trenches. Woo. And David's saying, we've got circumcision. We've got the promise. We've got the covenant. And David says to himself, who is this guy that doesn't have the promise and doesn't have the covenant? He's been telling me who does what I can do and what I can say. And God said, I gave you a mandate, devil. Amen, David. I want you to destroy the champion of Gath. Oh, come on now. That's why David ran out there and said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. My God, church, if you're not getting what I'm trying to tell you, but I'd like to tell you who is the devil. Amen. Who got kicked out of heaven when there was no tempter, when there was no devil. Amen. Telling us who have been blood bought. Amen. Been born of the Spirit and on our way to heaven. Who is he to tell us what we can and what we can't do? We are children of the Most High God. Amen. We've got the covenant. We've got the new birth. We've got the blood of the Lamb and the Word of God. We've got prayer and we've got fasting. I want to tell the devil, you don't have no right here. We've got a mandate tonight. Amen. God's getting ready to show up and destroy the works of the devil. Somebody here tonight, the devil keeps telling you you're a failure. You can't progress to the future because you're still living in the past. 
and you failed him, yes, but that wasn't the real failure. The real failure is that you won't get back up. A just man falleth seven times. Huh? The failure is not necessarily in what you did. But the failure is there's a God who's ready to destroy the works of the devil. And you won't get up. And who is the devil to tell any of us that we're a failure? He's the biggest failure that ever lived. He was kicked out of heaven when there was no tempter. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. You talk about a failure. You talk about a loser. He's a loser. And one day that great angel is going to bind him in a chain and shut him up. And then after a thousand years, he's going to be loosed. And then Jesus is going to say, no way, buddy. You're going to the lake of fire. And then to burn forever. I want to tell you, we're not losing. We're winning. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to close right here. Shay, come on. So they know I'm serious. Come on, baby doll. I want to tell you tonight, the devil's the biggest failure. We're the children of promise. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the promise is for you. It's for your children, and it's for your children's children. Don't let the devil tell you anything else. Are you hearing me? David comes out there. That giant is talking smack. David says, I got a mandate. You come to me with a shield and with a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I got a mandate. From a throne that's higher than you. Oh, I wish somebody would help me preach. Woo! Come on down, David. Went down that brook, got them five smooth stones. I don't know. Hey, man, those five smooth stones, we've preached about them. We've talked about them being Jesus and grace and faith. Hey, man, we've talked about them. Hey, man, having four brothers. Hey, man, I don't know. Hey, man, but how many stones do you think Jesus that David brought back to Saul's house? I'll tell you how many. He brought five back. Because when he brought Goliath's head back, there was a stone smacked right there, letting all the world know God doesn't miss his mark. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. God ain't going to miss his mark if you'll respond tonight, if you'll react, if you'll let God give you a mandate. Amen. His manifesto is to destroy the works of the devil, but he's given you a mandate tonight. Obey me. Worship me. Lift your hands and magnify me. Amen. Love me. Amen. Love me. Somebody in this house say, I'm going to love him tonight. I'm going to love him tonight. I'm going to love him tonight. But this, 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 this is, this is what I bring, what, what, what I bring and I'm done. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. We always think of Goliath falling back. Boom. Sword going one way. Shield going the other way. Amen. But listen, if a stone hit him in his forehead, science tells us when a moving object hits an immovable object, he will always fall back. I mean, uh, backwards. But when you read this verse right here, are you with me? Yeah. Verse 49, the Bible said he fell upon his face toward the earth. Mm. Come on. Wow. You think about that. He didn't fall backwards. He fell on his face toward the earth. It seemed like that God was saying, devil, shut up. 
you've been talking too long. And when David hit him, that smack talker went down. I want to tell you tonight, I believe that's the kind of altar call that heaven wants to give us tonight. He wants some of you to get some victory. The devil has been talking. The devil has been tormenting. The devil has made you fearful. But if you will hear what I'm telling you, amen, Christ, Christ is here. He wants to destroy the works of the devil in your life. He come to destroy them and greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. You are more than a conqueror. You know what more than a conqueror is? I'm going to explain it, then I'm done. I probably already killed it. But more than a conqueror is this. When David hit him, he fell flat. He conquered him. But he was more than a conqueror when he walked over to him, took that big old sword out of his scabbard, and he cut his head off. Then he was more than a conqueror. That's right. And that's been our or your Achilles heel. You've knocked him down over and over again, but you haven't cut his head off. And tonight, God wants you to destroy the giant. He wants to help you destroy the works. Bitterness, jealousy, envy, lust, addictions. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, to move in this house. There are those here tonight, Lord, that they need 